Jesus Christ. Can we clap for our master, Jesus Christ? Amen. 
He's a wonderful God. Tell your neighbor, say, he's a wonderful God. Say, he's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful Savior. There's no one like Jesus. But he's able to change you and become like him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's have our seats. Let's have our seats. Thank you, worship team. Let's clap for them. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Hallelujah. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love our Father? Say, I love you, Lord. Say, I love you, Jesus. We still continue with the mystery that Christ has given us. Hallelujah. Do we love Jesus Christ? Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I'm blessed above all. Some truly blessed from above. Some truly blessed from above. Hallelujah. 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 As we are here, remember God's intention is to develop us. God's intention is to equip us in order for all of us to arrive at the stature of the full man called Christ. The stature of the full man called Christ. Are we clear? Are we clear? So that we should not be like children, tossed back and forth by waves of teaching. By waves of what? Of teaching. You live by what you receive. Are we clear? So it depends whether when you receive that, is it the life of Christ or is it the life of the man who teaches you? So Jesus says in John chapter 10, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life. We need to understand what Jesus was saying there when he says, the thief. Are we clear? The thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You might think of the devil alone, while there's someone who has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Are we clear? Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? While someone has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The problem is many look at experience, um, qualifications, um, gifts, and they qualify the person whom Jesus has not qualified. Qualifying a person whom Jesus did not qualify causes one to live by his standards. Jesus says, here's my CV. I'm anointed to do all these things. That's a CV. That's a CV. So, if we know what we are anointed for and flow with what God has anointed us to do, God is able to flow through us and reach out to his people without delay. Do we love Jesus Christ? He says, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you might have life. Life in, in abundance. Life in, in abundance. We have to understand what is happening there. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? Celebrate Jesus. 
if I teach the law and the prophets, I steal from your life. I kill, I destroy, because it says, the law does what? The law? Ooh. The law does what? The law kills. The law does what? Kills. Are we clear? The law does what? Are we clear? That's why Jesus says, I've never come to abolish the law or the prophets, but I've come to fulfill them. And you must get it. Jesus does not say the law only and the prophets. And the, and the, and the, and the prophets. I've not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but I've come to fulfill them. It means there was something missing with the prophets. There was something missing there with the law. I've not come to abolish them, but I've come to fulfill them. Something is, is missing. That's why now we find this one thing. Why people were not excited about Jesus? For example, we talk about the Mount of Transfiguration in Luke 9 and Mark 9. Peter and others were now at the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus transfigures. They begin to see Moses meaning the law, Moses and Elijah, meaning the prophets. They saw Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. But they become excited. Why didn't you build Jesus a booth when he didn't appear with Moses and Elijah? But the moment you see the law and the prophets, you say, let's build three booths. And the attitude of God there was that, hey, don't be excited by this. You see the law and the prophets were excited. Why didn't you do this that you want to do now when Jesus was alone? So Jesus was enveloped with a cloud quickly and the voice came out of the cloud and says, this is my son. Listen to him only. Why didn't God say, listen to Moses, listen to Elijah? There are people who can preach about Ezekiel, but the spirit that they are speaking through Ezekiel, can ne they can never preach about it. They can preach about Isaiah, but the spirit that speaks through Isaiah can preach about it. So it becomes impossible to reach to that spirit. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? So, at the Mount of Transfiguration, they begin to be excited because of what they see. But God intervenes quickly. Say, no, 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 no. Listen to this one only. This is my son. Listen to him only. Never listen to Moses. Never listen to Elijah. The law and the prophets. Moses for the law. The prophets, Elijah. So listen to him on the why Now when you go to Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1. In the olden times, God used to speak to our forefathers in and by through the prophets. In the last of these days, he speaks to us in the person of the son. So if somebody speaks to you as a prophet, like in the old, you are a forefather. In the olden times, he used to speak to our forefathers in and by through the prophets. But in the last of these days, he speaks to us in the person of the son. So if you are a man of God, you can have a title, but don't forget one thing. God is not the respecter of men's position. So you might remain with what God does not respect. You might remain with what God does not respect. So, listen to the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 2. He says, when he met with those who are reputed to be pillars of the church, he says, who they are, what they are makes no difference to me. You might say this man has got pride. 
who they are, what they are, made no difference to him. He says, they added nothing to me when I met with them. Why? He met with people who honored the law so much. Peter and others, they honored the law. Because now as Peter was busy with the Gentiles, eating with them, forgotten that he's a Jew, he was eating what the Gentiles were eating. And according to the law, you're not supposed to eat what the Gentiles would eat. But now the moment he saw the Jews coming, he left the Gentiles and joined the Jews. And the Apostle Paul said it is hypocrisy because of the action that he took, everybody followed him, including Barnabas was with Paul. And Paul said to him, you have put the grace of God aside. You stand condemned. In Christ, there's no condemnation because it's not in the prophet. It's not in the law. In Christ, there's no condemnation. So it's the grace of God that he received in chapter 4, when they were doing what? They were taking care of the poor and everything. They were one in mind and heart. And it says, great grace fell upon them. But we see in Galatians chapter 2, he put it aside. And when you begin to put that grace aside, you are without the abundance in your life. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? Jesus says to Peter, you are Peter. You are the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And gates of Hades, meaning the realm of the dead, shall not prevail against this church. The gates of what? Hades shall not prevail against this church. So you are Peter. Do we love Jesus Christ? You are Peter. You qualify to go to any church. And anything that has got gates, any church with gates, it will not prevail against you. If those gates have been prevailing against others, such gates cannot prevail against you. I mean, gates prevent people from entering into the glory. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? So, Peter, you are what? The rock. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and gates of Hades. Hades meaning the realm of the, of the dead shall not prevail against this church. But now Galatians chapter 2, he puts that grace aside. That fullness came in chapter 4. Now, we can see now in Acts chapter 3, because he carries that spirit, he carries that presence, he go to a church with a gate called Beautiful. You see, many people, they love glitters. Just because the gate is called beautiful, you think that church was right. The church was not right. Because there was a man who lived like a pig and who people would bring next to the gate while they fulfill what he desired by giving him money and entering the church. So pagans look for all these things. So they were fulfilling Matthew chapter 6 from verse 31. Pagans look for all these things. Pagans look for all the things. But seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things taken together shall be added unto you. So the man will be taken by people to the gate, beautiful. And people who would enter the church, they would fulfill what he's looking for. Are we clear? He's looking for money. There's no life. Jesus says, I've come. That he might have. That he might have what? Life. Now, Peter comes because Jesus prophesied now. When he goes to the church, he says, he looks unto him and says, look unto us. Look here. Silver and gold we don't have. Not that he didn't have money. You see, there are people, when you have money, you keep on giving money when you're not supposed to give money. He says, silver and gold have none. But such as I have, I give it to you in the name of Jesus. So what I give you now, it's not like fulfilling your desires. It's not fulfilling. What I have, I give it to you in the name. Now, what is Peter doing there? He's dealing with this gate. He's dealing with, it's called beautiful, but it's nothing good that it does. 
to everybody who enters. They put a man there every time. Begging for money. Pagans look for all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all shall be added unto you. So people who would live in there, they would give him money and go in church. They were like him. They were also beggars. He was at the gate begging. Begging for what? For money. And those who go in shall give him money. Nothing good was given unto him. So they would go inside the church thinking that they're worshipping. They were not worshipping. Until Peter came and dealt with the gate. Such as I have, I give it to you in the name of Jesus. And he went in. When he went in, the first time people watching him preaching in the church and they said in Acts chapter 4, listen to the way these people speak. They are unschooled. They are not learned. But the way they teach, it shows that they have been with Jesus. Such grace. That when people look at you, can you imagine, they see that you have been with Jesus. When he comes to the man, he says, look at me first. I'm not like everybody who has entered this church. What I give you, it's not to fulfill your lust. So now, after going in, he finished with what? With the, with the gate. Are we clear? Now remember, we're going back now to Luke 16. Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus, hoping to get what falls from the rich man's table. He was at the gate of the rich man. At the gate of the rich man's house. In other words, the rich man was supposed to go in his house, give to Lazarus, and go in his house. So Acts chapter 3, they will come with money. They will go to the man and go in the house. So the rich man would be in his house. It doesn't say Lazarus ate anything from his house. It says Lazarus was carelessly dropped down. I would clear, carelessly dropped down at the gate of the rich man. When he was carelessly dropped down there, it's not like Acts chapter 3, where they would pick up a man and put him decently at the gate and give him money. It says Lazarus was carelessly dropped down at the gate of the rich man, carelessly dropped down there at the gate, and he didn't get from there, rich man. As he was carelessly dropped down, it says dogs came and licked his sores. Dogs would come and lick the sores of Lazarus. Are we clear? Not even a dog will come in Acts chapter 3. Are we clear? Now, this is still a parable. Dogs came to lick the souls of a man who was carelessly dropped down. Are we clear? Now, chapter 15, remember Lazarus was at the gate as well. This man is rich. I want us to get this. This man is rich. There were people in Acts chapter 3 giving money to the men.